Okay, hello, Maria. I am checking your Instagram <laughs> and in your account as an introduction. Uh, it looks like uh, Odio el Arte, so it means I hate art. I do. Can you tell us if it's a kind of provocation or? I don't know, like, it's not that I heard, I, it's not that I hate art, but I hate art dynamics. I don't know, like whatever, a piece of movement to get recognition, not even like a, like as a, as a great piece of art, but just like art itself. And the mechanisms involved in this, like have a lot to do with like things like race, gender, um, economic position, you know, like, um, in my case, I work with like fabrics and knitting and sewing. Um, there is like a rich textile uh, tradition in, in, in Peru, you know, but it has taken so long to be recognized. And it, it's not even like recognized like by us, like, um, you know, like uh, the views on arts are, are mostly that we get like uh, sections like uh, Europe or like Occident or like USA or so. You know, so I don't know. I just feel like this, this, this mechanisms, like in order to be approved, like as an art, like as an art piece, sometimes just uh, seem very unfair mm -hmm. to me. Also, like in Peru, for a long time, there was like this struggle between what is called popular art and fine arts, mm -hmm. because the artistic uh, traditions. In the country, which are not really part of, because I make them from Lima and from like a city, uh, were not accepted as art because it was different from like fine arts view that was like mostly European, having completely disregard for the fact that our context and our people and our situations were completely different. Mm -hmm. You know, and that applies also for like I don't know females in art, like uh, history of art was written mostly by males. You know. And like, uh, I don't know, LGBTQ, like queer, like transgenders, like, uh, I don't know, we pass from being exota like exotization, like, I don't know if that's the word, like in English, when you're seen from like a, as a sensationalism piece, you know, and mm -hmm. it's not even like they even care much about what you're doing or what you're trying to talk about, but mostly by the fact that, oh, like, this is like also new and controversial, and, and it's just kind of like, yeah, like a, like a kind of show and not, yeah. and not art. Yeah, so I, I, it's not really, I hate art, but I do hate art dynamics. But also there is an, 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 an amazing underground thing in, in Lima, and actually you are involved in that. So uh, it's a kind of uh, different system of, of, of art, the public art, mm -hmm. the big art, and the mm -hmm. underground who is more interested, actually. I don't know, sometimes it takes a lot of you. You know, like, uh, and maybe no longer I'm such part of like underground culture because I sort of found a way to group with people, to try to make contacts, to try to, I don't know, mix this situation of like uh, institutionalized and underground and stuff, you know, but I don't think it's like it shouldn't take like 10, 15, 40 years in order to be able to like uh, have a decent life with what you do. You know, like, uh, so, so yes, underground art, like, it's great, you know, like, we get to see proposals and institutionalized proposals that are seen now have been in part of the underground scene for, like, years, you know? So, just that now they think it's interesting and such, but the second that this counterculture, like, underground movement, says something or speaks against or just like something that might cause some discomfort 
for the institution. The institution will shut you down. They will take down your art piece, they will close your show, they will give in to social pressure regarding religion, identity, or gender, and they will just like, and even if they are simply, if you don't simply don't agree with like whatever collectors or art dealers say, they will just stop working with you. And I do know that they get to work with whoever they want, but what I, like, what is the, the idea? Like, you know, it, I know it's a business and stuff, but that goes back to the first question also, like, what do we see now? Like, what do we see in art history? Now, what, what are people going to be able to see? You know, who chooses that? Who keeps the collections? Who actually is able to, like, storage and keep these art pieces? And what do they, what do, what do they, like, have in mind regarding this, you know? Like, are they actually collecting pieces because they are valuable? They actually represent artistic context of different places? Or they get to select the, this, the different speeches and discourses and things that are said? And that's what gets like kept over time, and then that's what people in the future think that I don't know yeah. the places or the art or anything was about, you know. I know artist is a career and it's okay when people label themselves or like others as such. But I, 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 know, I personally prefer to think of myself as an art worker. You know, not like more on the basis of like labor and such. Like and like I know it's like a basic human instinct and whatever. Right? The, I don't know, I think the theme of artist has all these connotations that have been dragged throughout the years of being some, like, an entertainer, you know? And, and, and I'm not trying to, like, entertain anybody. Like, I, I don't really like the term artist, like, for, for myself. So for became an artist, you have, to, you have to wait a little bit after your studies and just to find yourself. It's not like you finish art school and you get to like, like what do you do if you don't have money? Like where, where how are you gonna get materials? How are you gonna rent a space? So you have to get a job, you know, doing like whatever. And so when you have this other job, how do you get time to work on your art pieces or do you research or like, uh, or travel or do whatever, you know? So I had to figure out a way to kind of do both, you know, to make a true cultural management be able to create platforms so I will have a place to work at and it's not something that you can do like just one person you know so you start gathering other artists uh, we started creating like these different like community projects like uh, Galeria Ambulante and Escuela Libre de Arte and La Carniceria which are based on like uh, different outtakes on like art gallery, art education and art market. And La Carniceria was uh, your idea, yeah? In collaboration with uh, Proyecto Amil, am I right? Yeah, and Rodrigo Gomez who was my, my neighbor <laughs> in Proyecto Amil. When I get in touch with Project Me, I find this place that actually opens their doors, like they're like one of the best like contemporary art spaces in Peru. And they showcase art pieces from students or like self-taught artists. And you don't have to have like a 20 year career in order to show your place, to show your work there. And they'll- the Supporting young artists. Yeah, they show support when you have like a safe space then things get to develop at a different pace. You know, in Peru, like, I, I, there's, I don't know, I, I feel like there's so much good, like, artists and art workers and a scene, but it is so hard to thrive because there is no budget. <laughs> Uh, 
at the university, you, you were a student, but now you are a teacher. Oh, yes. But you were a, t a student in a public university, it's quite traditional, you told us. Mm -hmm. uh, but now you are in a really modern mm -hmm. and private uh, university. Yes. Does the students have this kind of studies about uh, how to talk with a curator, how to manage, um, I don't know, some, yes. some these kind of things, more practical for artists? Yes, because I study, as I mentioned, in National Fine Arts School, and now I teach in Corriente Alterna Art School, uh, which is private. And you can just tell the differences, like my co-workers and peers are teachers, are art workers, they, they have shows, like they're like active in the art scene, you know, and there is like you no know, competition between us. For most of us, we, since we have like all this experience, you're able to like tell your students how to make things easier, you know. And also, like if your teachers are curators, are critics, and are artists, when you finish art school, you already know. You already know at least some people. You know, you know how it works. It doesn't mean that we're gonna like uh, have like favorites or something because uh, it doesn't really work like that. But it helps you as a student kind of know how it is, how hard is it going to be, what things that you might encounter that are not specifically like regarding your uh, technical practice. So you are an art worker, mm -hmm. not an artist, okay. You are a teacher, mm -hmm. but also you have a son. Mm -hmm. So how maternity changed your life and your work? Maternity taught me I, actually a lot of things, you know. Uh, taught me to be patient, <laughs> uh, to be humble also, because, I don't know, I have this view of myself since everything was always so hard. I was like, oh yeah, they like, can do whatever, I don't care, like, I don't know. And then my son came along and I cannot do whatever and it is really hard. <laughs> and sometimes I'm just not going to be able to do some things, you know, mm -hmm. and that is okay. Sometimes uh, also for your artistic career, like, uh, since it's so competitive, you just try to like, uh, like try to do so much, uh, like at the same moment. And uh, now I want to... Uh, I take some more time to select what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. So to see what I have the actual time to do, you know, take much more care of more my priorities. my mental yeah. health also, <laughs> you know. Moises, because Moises. it's his name. Yeah. Uh, does Moises like uh, your work? He plays? <laughs> I just hope he doesn't get bored eventually, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he climbs then, uh, hides, like, just like crawls, like underneath or in between. Or sometimes I will work with him, make an installation, then I will look back and he's just like slept, sleeping like on them because they're like oh. fabric and they're soft. And I guess he gets bored <laughs> like, <laughs> like after a while. Because at first he liked them more, I think. Now he like plays a little bit and then he's like, oh, he wants to like to do something else. You know, so yeah, like, I, I think he, he, he enjoys them. Maternity is uh, one of the subjects that you are uh, interested in, uh, or you were interested in um, in, in your work uh, uh, before. And another subject which uh, are important for you, you are concerned and you would like to work with that in your creation. Well, I've been working subjects, uh, I like to work from experience, you know, and like research, but still like, uh, something that I feel like close to. Mm -hmm. So, so far I work subjects, uh, I used to work like gender, like, well, like back in time, female gender. Dogma, like religious dogma, and the toll that it takes on like identity, um, people, 
it's not been like well I, I had my mixed feelings about that because I do respect religious belief of other people you know but I, I just don't appreciate when they're like uh, trying like put it on me <laughs> um, now that I'm like trying to like uh, figure out to wait to deal with like identity subjects you know like uh, and I still work like with my son sometimes kind of like mm -hmm. I used to first it was like maternity and now is uh, you know like uh, masculinity mm -hmm. you know because I, I, I don't, I don't want to grow like uh, I started doing my hormone replacement therapy like uh, more than a year ago I, I'm not taking like hormones and doing all of this to become like a jerk you know like this macho mm -hmm. male ¿Usted legal, legalizaría el aborto o no? Para nada la eutanasia. Eso va a ser. Tra va, va, vamos a trasladar a la Asamblea Nacional Constituyente que ya. se debata. Pero personalmente no estoy de acuerdo. La, la eutanasia. También que se traslade, pero tampoco estoy de acuerdo. El pueblo primero es la familia, primero es el, uh -huh. eh, primero es el país. Que... Interesante. You mentioned it uh, two times, or maybe three, and uh, <laughs> then remember the, uh, the word homophobia. Yes. And. And the. Have you feel in your own life uh, this homophobic because uh, you are a transgender uh, or? In Peru, or yes. Here I, I don't, I haven't really been here that long. Um, I do know the discrimination is like intersectional. So sometimes it's not just your identity. So people don't really understand in which way direction like I'm transitioning and such. And also like it's, uh, I don't know, like a person that's heavily tattooed, I like have my, my eyes like uh, tattooed, I have my tongue split and stuff. So they just kind of feel like I'm a, like a weird like human, you know. But the people do, ye do yell at me at the streets. Coming back to your to your work of art, um, can you tell us maybe what what's in your head when you are creating, <laughs> when you are working actually in your pieces? Uh, because now in Broadswap you are creating this site specific and yes. and you are uh, changing of course your mind, adapting in the space. Uh -huh. So how is this evolution in your mind? How to how to imagine. Usually conversations with people help me out a lot to figure out like context and stuff. Because you can read a lot about history of a place, but it's not until you talk to people that you see like how that history has like uh, contextualized like now. And I know this is also subject to like uh, intersectionality, like it's it depends on who you're talking to and what they tell you. But, like, I think the situation here in Poland, uh, at least for what I've been receiving regarding uh, rights for uh, LGBTQ and, and people that have, like, uh, birth uh, rights and stuff, is a bit complicated now, which is kind of, like, crazy for me because in Peru, we, like, abortion is, is not legal, like at all. So we have this idea that once that is achieved, it's like you win, you know, like you finally, you get it. And then, yeah, and like under certain situations, I think it is like legal, but often uh, medical places just refuse to offer the service, even, oh if, even if you're a child, like even if you're like 10 years old, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that being said, like that has like increased like uh, during the pandemic. So a lot of the, like these are like rape victims from like their own family members and stuff. And um, but there's this idea that when you get this, uh, I don't know, this backup from like government, like she's like kind of like winning, like you get it. Mm -hmm. And then I came here and they told me that it's not legal here anymore. You know, so I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> can people go back on that? Then I heard like so, 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 something happening like that in Texas, like in the US. And it's like, okay, so this is like a, a, a constant, yeah. like, uh, like fight or like struggle.
so we were talking about uh, really big, huge problems in society, in our lives. Uh, uh, so maybe this is because your installations are so huge also and so impressive, because actually you are a person really shy. Yeah, really shy. It might sound childish, but for overwhelming subjects, I do overwhelming things. You know, so it's like big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So thank you so much, uh, Maria, for thank our you. conversation. And it's always a pleasure.